Hello and welcome to yesterday's tech. In this video I will test four different coolers in size and performance. I have a stock cooler from Intel, a low profile cooler from ID Cooling with four heat pipes, a thermal take with four heat pipes and one 90mm fan, and another thermal take with five heat pipes and two 1200mm fan. Theoretically, the laws of physics cannot be destroyed, but I want to see myself the real differences and I will share this with you. Beginning with the stock cooler, this cooler comes with almost any Intel CPU excepting those that are made for overclocking and i9 processors. I've used such coolers many years ago and actually I'm still quite surprised how good they are considering they're actually free, being included with the CPU. In my opinion, the main problem of this cooler is the plastic mount, which at a point it breaks, then another problem is that it's quite noisy. Otherwise, a pretty decent cooler for its size. For this test, I'm using Heavy Load, which is a free program and will stress my CPU up to 100%, so I can see how the cooler will handle the process. The CPU is an i3 at 65 watts thermal design power from the last generation, which is an average TDP on most CPUs excepting those that are high-end and made for overclocking. The i7-10700 or the i9-10900 from the last gen Intel CPUs has the same thermal design power. So what I'm testing here is also available for i5, i7 and i9 CPUs. On the table the results are quite amazing. After 10 minutes load it didn't exceed 62 degrees, but I'm placing a box over the motherboard so I can simulate a poorly ventilated case. Now after 10 minutes load it hit 73 degrees, which is not bad at all for a stock cooler, but makes a lot of noise and is distracting. Moving on low profile cooler, which is an IS40X from ID Cooling with 4 heat pipes and 192mm fan. I like how it looks, it has a metal mounting system which is pretty solid, unfortunately quite difficult to mount. In full load sitting on the table it hits not more than 57 degrees which is 5 degrees under the stock cooler. Once I put the box over the motherboard now it gets up to 75 degrees which is 2 degrees more than the stock cooler but makes a lot less noise. The thermal take contact 21 was reviewed in a previous video. It has four heat pipes and one 92 mm fan. Its mounting system is all metal and very easy to mount. Open simulating a well ventilated case temperature stops at 49 degrees. 8 degrees below the low profile cooler and 13 degrees below the stock cooler. With the motherboard covered, it hits just 56 degrees, which is actually 6 degrees below the stock cooler when it was completely open. Now, the last one is the Thermal Take NIC C5 released in 2013. It has 5 heat pipes and 2 1200mm fan, 
up to 2000 rotations per minute. The radiator itself is not as big as it might look when we see the cooler as a package, but still larger than any of the previous tested in this video and should hit the best performance. I would say this is very easy to mount, most of the mounting system is made from metal and both fans are very easy to put in place. The only downside of this cooler is that its fans are not with pulse width modulation, which means the computer will not control the fans. There is only a 3 pin connector and you have a manual mode to adjust the speed of both fans. This cooler in full load with open case hits only 42 degrees at only 1000 rotations. This is actually 20 degrees below the stock cooler, 15 degrees below the low profile cooler and 7 degrees below the other thermal take with one less heat pipe and just one single fan. With everything covered it hits 47 degrees at 1000 rotations and once I adjust the fan speed to 2000 rotations it stays mostly between 39 and 41. The noise is extremely high and I won't be able to use a computer at a such high level of noise. It's just like I have a hair dryer on my desk. but. This cooler does a great job at only 1000 rotations per minute, so I'm not worried about its noise at its maximum performance. Pretty much as expected, the bigger the better, but of course they target different situations. If you plan to make a low profile PC using an ITX motherboard and an ITX GPU, the big coolers becomes irrelevant because they won't fit inside the PC case. Otherwise, if you have a big tower PC, there's no point in using a low profile cooler because you won't get any benefit from the space you save by putting a low profile cooler inside. And not the least, it matters the ambient room temperature. In my case was 22 degrees Celsius and the CPU was in full load around 10 minutes per session. If you're using a stock cooler in a room where the ambient temperature is over 30 degrees Celsius, the case is not well ventilated and the CPU stays in full load for many hours, it can definitely heat even over 90 degrees Celsius. It happened to me in the past. Those are my results testing a stock cooler, a low profile cooler, a 4 heat pipes cooler and a 5 heat pipes cooler with two fans. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.